we have been told for the longest time as black people, we have been told that we don't have a right to think. We don't have a right to feel. We don't have a right to know. We don't have a right to determine our own direction. That we are this, this, this ward class, this adoptee class of the dominant society. That we are not allowed to pursue our own interests. That we are to find the kindest white person that we can. And their interests should be our interests. And that we need to wait. And wait. And wait. And continue to wait. And wait. And wait some more. You just need to keep waiting. And if, if you are patient enough. If you suffer enough. If you Pray enough, if you go on long enough, if you are, if you are quiet long enough, if you accept the abuse long enough, if you back other people's play long enough, if you try to be the conscience of the nation and of the planet long enough, why someday your ship is going to come in. Now we can't tell you how big it's going to be. We can't tell you what you're going to get because remember, we haven't actually said you're going to get anything. But if you just hang in there for a little while, just hang in there and just keep on hanging in there. Why things will turn around for you indirectly, because you see, you have to understand that you are so loathsome to the general population. You see, there is no systemic racism, but you must also understand that you're loathsome to this population uh, that is not practicing systemic racism ag against you. There is no systemic racism, but we can't promote your issues. Everybody else can proudly stand up and name their issues. Ah, but you don't have any, even though you are at the bottom of the ladder, even though you are the most abused, even though you are the most maligned, even though you are the most attacked, far outstretching everyone else, well, you just need to wait and wait and wait. And when it is time to actually exert some power and influence in the society. Well, the method that you choose, the method that you choose, well, you should only confine yourself to the parameters that we choose for you. So you see, if we say that what you're getting is good enough, well, then that's good enough. And if we tell you that the only recourse you have is over here on the left, well, you're supposed to just go to the left. Or if we tell you what the only recourse you have is over here on the right, well, you go over there on the right. And this is the game that is played with us. It was played with us in Jamestown. It's been played with us in antebellum slavery. It's been played with us in chattel slavery. It's been played with us in reconstruction. It has been played with us ever since. That we're supposed to check in with everybody else before we can come to a determination of what's best for us. And lo and behold, as soon as we let you know what's best for us, well, everybody else decides to jump on us. Everybody else decides to let you know, oh man, no, 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 no. No, you don't get a vote. You don't get to decide what's in your best interest. You don't get to choose. You don't get to submit your input. If we tell you that getting gunned down by the police is the best you can get, well, damn it, you just need to understand it is the best you can get. Never mind if it's not happening to everyone else. Never mind if it's not happening to anyone else. You see, you have been set aside for special hatred and disdain. So you should just accept whatever happens. Whether it be good or bad, you just accept it. Now everybody else... We don't talk to that way, but where you're concerned, 
That's what you get. And you see, black people were actually bamboozled and deceived and fooled. And in many cases, they were cowards who willfully bowed down and accepted this idea that we know what we're supposed to have. We are supposed to have complete and total autonomy. We are supposed to have complete and total unfettered autonomy. Freedom, justice, and equality, as Malcolm X called it, but I call it freedom, justice, and empowerment. That's what we're supposed to have. That's what we're supposed to get. That's where we're supposed to be. And so many black folk have sat up here and said, well, I ain't willing to fight for it. I'm not willing to struggle for it. I'm scared to death I will not get white acceptance. So I will accept the status quo no matter how bad I will accept the status quo let's just be very very clear an individual who says to us that we need to choose the lesser of two evils that's a nigga who's used to getting his backside beaten that's who that is and let's just be very clear there are a large number of black folk that they have become so accustomed to getting their asses whooped for so long that they simply accept the situation as it is and look at you and me like we're the crazy ones. What you mean? You ain't gonna let them whoop us no more. You, they say, they tell us always the same thing. You're gonna stir up trouble. Don't you all know Malcolm X gave speeches about being the troublemaking Negro, the troublesome Negro? He gave speeches about that because that's what we've all, that's the trick and the ploy that's always been used and leveled against us. Is that we need to understand that the worst thing you can do as a black person is make trouble now you see for everybody else they're taught to make trouble they're revered for making trouble in white society you've got movie after movie where they drill it in your heads that white people have an unimpeded God given right to make trouble anywhere and everywhere the Patriot 300. As black people, you, we have been the most maligned and murdered in history, and yet it's wrong for us to make trouble. And so they've gotten black people together as a group to let us sit up here and tell each other that you need to bow down. We got black folk as a group. They send out the elderly, the rickety, to sit up here and tell the young folks in the streets, you don't need to make no trouble. You just need to wait on these good white folks to change their mind about how they're treating you. You need to wait for these people to find religion. You need to just keep supporting them and eventually they're going to spend so much time around you that why wow, they're going to get used to it. They're going to get used to it and, and eventually they'll get used to your presence. They'll get tired of beating on you and yeah, they'll go ahead and fix that eventually. But that won't happen if you are unwilling to work the plan and the plan is accept the dominant society's abuse until they are tired of doing so. That's the plan. Accept their abuse until they get tired of doing it. Participate in the process even if the process doesn't work. Gather together your friends and family and explain to them that this thing you've been doing all this time that isn't working, you need to just keep doing it until it works. 
Do you understand that? The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over, expecting a different result. They keep telling us our only option is to keep doing something that doesn't work. That's our only option. Keep doing something that doesn't work. Now, they never go to other groups of people and say that. Voting for the lesser of two evils. They never tell Jewish people, you need to choose the politician who hates you the least. You need to po vote for the politician who has promoted the least number of laws targeting you. You need to vote for the politicians who are less enthusiastic about going at your throat. You need to go for the, for the politician who is trying to chop off your hand as opposed to the one who's trying to chop off your foot. You need, you need to vote for him. Vote for the lesser. of Vote for the person who hates you the least. Now, they, that's a false choice given to you. That your choices are only you can vote for the guy who hates you 100% and, or vote for the guy who hates you 99%. That's a false choice because there is a third option. The third option is empower yourself and do not support anyone who does not support you. But you got to understand that only works with a mind that isn't buck dancing and hasn't been buck broken. That doesn't work on an enslaved mind. That doesn't work on a mind that has grown accustomed to the abuse. That doesn't work for a mind that speaks the vocabulary of oppression. That doesn't speak, that doesn't translate to them. You see, that's why I focused on the young people. That was why when I started the Black Channel, I said that freedom for us is explained as the black agenda is explained as black empowerment and black empowerment is economic control black people being in economic control of our interests that is the definition of empowerment and empowerment is the agenda empowerment is the agenda not integration integration is not the agenda not LGBT. LGBT is not the agenda. Not civil rights. Civil rights not the agenda. Not education. Education is not the agenda. Empowerment. Once we have empowerment, we'll provide the rest for ourselves. But as black people, you've got to understand that there is a buck dancing class among us. And that they speak the language of supporting the lesser of two evils because you have to understand in their minds, they are so used to the abuse and so accustomed to being harmed that it no longer hurts them and it no longer offends them. They're so accustomed to being distressed, belittled, heckled, their rights violated. They're so used to that that they have accepted that as their identity. They don't have anything else in common with us. Other than skin color, they have nothing else in common with us. Because you see, for those of us who do not accept the abuse, we're speaking a foreign language. Well, I shouldn't say a foreign language. We're speaking a forbidden language. We're speaking a forbidden language. You see, in these people's minds, in black society, the folk who tolerate the abuse in their mind, they are simply paying the cost of, quote, acceptance. You see, if a thousand white people hurt them and hate them and brutalize them, but only two white folk don't do it, far as they're concerned, that is acceptance. That is victory. That is success. What we're talking about, man, it sounds too much like work. And it sounds damn too much like trouble. Not trying to have it. This idea of the lesser of two evils. Can someone tell me what we have to show for the lesser of two evils? Barack Hussein Obama was in the White House for eight years. That was going to be the lesser of two evils. And police and white supremacists murdered us with absolute impunity while he sat there in the White House singing Al Green and his damn wife dancing the Dougie. The lesser of two evils.
you had your choice between Bill Clinton and, and George W. Bush or Bill Clinton and Bob Dole, you voted for Bill Clinton, got three strikes, the prison industrial complex, the lesser of two evils, the lesser of two evils, that's what they told us we were going to get. You supported Hillary Clinton all the way up to a hair's breadth of the White House. You supported Kamala Harris. Some of you did. Most of the sensible folk didn't. Kamala Harris identified as black only when it was convenient. Soon she didn't have the nomination anymore. First thing she did was let the world know, by the way, I meant what I told you, niggas. I'm Asian. I meant what I told you, niggas. I'm Asian. I meant what I told you. By the way, now that I don't have to sit there and pretend anymore, I can let you know what I really think of you. And yeah, I ain't one of you niggas. I'm other. I'm an Asian. I'm a mixed Asian, but that's okay. We got some off brown colored Asians to go down to the Philippines and whatnot. Hell in India where her mother is from. Yeah, we're okay. Yeah, we can do that. We can do that. She let you know. I ain't with you. And then you still got buck dancing niggas out here who are saying, overlook that. That's a, a that, that is a person with a childhood of abuse. Jamel Hill, I'm talking to you. Dr. Jason, Jason, whatever the hell your name is, Professor Black Truth, been teeing off on that fool today. Yeah, I'm talking about you. Jamila Lemieux. Yes, I'm talking about you. These people who when DJ Vlad talks to them, they start pouring out their hearts and confessing about their childhoods of abuse. Do you understand that? I mean, I want you all to be very, very clear. I'm not being hyperbolic and I'm not saying this as an example. Look. Jamel Hill said it. Jamila Lemieux has talked about it to the point that now she's got issues. Everywhere you go, they go and find some black person who is dealing with mental problems, emotional problems. They come from an abusive childhood and they say, oh, good. Let me give you a television contract. Let me give you a a radio contract. They go and find people who are accustomed to being abused. And then they give them a platform to tell the rest of us why we should be comfortable getting abused. I'm not saying this is hyperbole. I'm not saying this is exaggeration. I mean this literally. They go and find Negroes who are used to being abused. Tarana Burke, there's an abuse case if I ever saw one. Cardi B. Nicki Minaj, have you seen anything about their childhoods? Have you investigated their childhoods, by the way? Cardi B and Nicki Minaj, have you all investigated their life stories and their autobiographies? I've detailed it before here. When you go and take a look at where they come from and the environment that they come from. Yeah, no wonder they talk like that. They're accustomed to abuse. And now they're here to preach to the rest of us about why we should be comfortable with being abused too. They make loud media mouthpieces of individuals accustomed to abuse. To go and tell the rest of us, I look like you, well, somewhat like you, and you should accept the abuse the way I have. The lesser of two evils. We've been sold on this lie of Accepting the lesser of two evils. And all we end up with is lesser and evil. Keith Ellison was up there in Minnesota. Back in the 90s, I mean, he was the most in-your-face Negro you saw on TV, proud Muslim. He was going to speak up for black folk, this, that, and the other. Soon as you made him attorney general in Minnesota, I guess he figured what were the chances I would get caught up in a case that was going to have people putting all eyes on me. And then boom, damn it, here comes George Floyd. Damn. So much for having a free ride. 
at the Attorney General's office. So much for that free ride. Now Keith Ellison is shuffling his feet. All of a sudden, all these laws that they freely use to lock black folk up with and you can't get away, all of a sudden, the, 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 the trap that grabbed Mohammed Noor and he couldn't get away, now all of a sudden is flipped back again. Before Mohammed Noor, the, the system wouldn't move. When Mohammed Noor got indicted, the system moved quick, fast, and in a hurry and severe. After he was indicted and convicted, all of a sudden the system is back to shuffling his feet. Derek Shaven is out on bail. The judge has tossed out the third degree murder charge. When you're black, you can get second degree, third degree, first degree, nth degree, you can get all the degrees. Psychology degree, socially, social degree. When you go into court, you can get every degree they throw at you, you qualify for. Ah, but when it's other folk, all of a sudden, ah, this don't really apply. Let's go ahead and knock this down. Let's see if we can get a charge in here. We can let them out in, with time served. The lesser of two evils. Muhammad Noor wasn't just sent to prison. Muhammad Noor was sent to prison in record time. And do you notice something? Muhammad Noor, it didn't take protests. It didn't take riots. It didn't take threats. It didn't take marching. Do you notice that? Derek Stafford down there in Louisiana, it didn't take protests or marches. He killed a little white child. He didn't get the Timothy Lohman treatment. Ayanna Jones, six years old, same age as a little white child that got killed in Louisiana. They sent Derek, Sha Derek Stafford to prison. Ayanna Jones killers walk the streets today. You call that justice? You call that the lesser of two evils? Exactly how is this less? Exactly, explain to me exactly how this is less. Explain that to me. We sit up here and we allow individuals who are sitting back, looking for a kickback, looking for somebody to pay their bills, looking for somebody to hold them down, looking for somebody to give them a job. And they sell the rest of us on the idea that we need to support the lesser of two evils. It doesn't matter how severe it gets, how bad it gets. Your only recourse is choosing the lesser of two evils. And when you remind them that other groups of people don't do that, then they come at you with a million excuses why other people don't have to accept it. That is a broken Negro. Roland Martin isn't just annoying. Roland Martin's particular form of treason is dangerous. It is dangerous because he's sitting up here trying to sound as sincere as he can for something he knows is a damn lie. you got all these Negroes in their fraternities and sororities and boule and champagne cocktail party circuits telling the rest of us what we don't need, telling the rest of us what we don't have to have, telling the rest of us what we need to accept while they sitting in the big house. Tell me again about the lesser of two evils. Tell me again about that. Tell me again about how I need to learn how to accept the lesser of two evils. Tell me again about how choosing the lesser of two evils is a strategy. If you don't vote for Biden then Donald Trump's going to win. Well, isn't that Biden's fault? If Donald Trump wins, isn't that Biden's fault? How the hell is that my fault? Biden should be making an undeniable case for himself. You know, the same way that the white supremacists do. Donald Trump made an undeniable case to the white supremacists. He let them know. I'm, it's an undeniable case. Why would you not vote for me? 
if Joe Biden doesn't win, isn't that his fault? He has all the money in the damn world. Shouldn't he be able to make a compelling case to us about why we should support him? Isn't that the reason that you, quote, run for office is so that you can make the case to the constituency that it's a no brainer? That they should be supporting you should be a no brainer. Isn't that the entire point of running for office? Because you see, when they go in front of Jewish people, they make sure it's a no-brainer. When they get in front of Jewish people, it's a no-brainer. You should vote for me. When they get in front of gays and the LGBT lobby, it's a no-brainer. You should vote for us, even though they make up a minuscule almost insignificant part of the population. When they go in front of Asian people, they don't talk to them the way they talk to us. And I'm going to be discussing that here in just a few moments. Because you'll notice the dominant society and your news agencies and whatnot and your politicians, they don't talk to Asians the way they do to us. They don't talk to Latinos the way they do to us. You see, when they talk to all these other people, they talk to them with reverence. They don't sit up here and talk to these folks talking about, if you don't vote for me, you ain't Asian. Could you imagine Joe Biden saying that? If you don't vote for me, you're not Asian. Think about that for a few moments. Think about that now. If you don't vote for me, you're not Asian. If you don't vote for me, you're not Latino. If you don't vote for me, you're not Jewish. If you don't vote for me, you're not gay. No, folks, you see, now you want to get your cackles up because when you say it like that, you realize, oh, hell. You would never even think to say something like that to any of these other groups. And by the way, you know it was sincere because we're the only people that these folk talk crazy to. Black people are the only people that anybody goes up to and looks us in the face and tells us what we can't get. Have they told the Latinos that there's anything they can't get? We're talking about folks who aren't even citizens. And yet they are assuring them of all the things they're going to get, even though they're not citizens. These must be buffer classes meant for the purposes of obstructing us. What else can a non, how does a non-citizen contribute? How does a non-citizen help a politician? So you're telling me that, Non-citizens are more valuable than black citizens. They don't talk crazy to these other people. They don't tell the LGBT that you just need to accept the way things are. You just need to get comfortable with the way things are. LGBT folks, you need to understand that you must wait. You have to wait. We'll get around to your issue when there's more popular support. Have you ever heard them say that to get to gays? Well, we'll defend your interests once there's more popular support. You see, we can't pass the Equality Act. We can't even discuss it or endorse it. Because you see, there's not enough support for the Equality Act since 95. 95- of the country is heterosexual. There's not enough support for it. We can't just go out here and promote the benefits that promote the interests of just 3% of the population. We can't do that. We can't do that. No, you're going to have to wait. That's what, have they ever told gays that? Have they ever told Jewish people there's not enough support for Israel You're going to have to just wait. Barack Obama said, remember when he talked to Ta-Nehisi Coates in the Atlantic, when Ta-Nehisi pressed him about reparations, well, black folk need to understand that things have gotten better. I mean, they're still not perfect. They're still not great. There's still some bad things. But eventually, 
it'll get better. Has he ever talked to gays like that and said, you just need to be patient? I know it's bad, but you just need to be patient because eventually it'll get better. Do they talk to anyone that way? Do they seriously speak that way to anybody? No, they reserve a special amount of disdain and disgust for us. They reserve a particular amount of it for us. And then you got black folks promoting the lesser of two evils. Telling us that we have no choice but to support the lesser of two evils when the both of them treat us the same. What, 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 what did Donald Trump do that Barack Obama didn't double down on? You want to know the real truth about Donald Trump? People, Donald Trump doesn't have any more racist laws or, or racist acts to really perpetrate on black folk because Barack Obama already did them all. Barack Obama already sanctioned state violence against us. It, Trump wouldn't be saying something new. Trump can't do anything new. Obama already did it. That door has already been opened. Tell me what new ground could Trump possibly pursue? Tell me what new thing he could do. What is the new thing that Trump could do that his predecessor and predecessors didn't, that we supported in the past, didn't already do? If you don't vote Democrat, you will lose the Voting Rights Act. You realize the Voting Rights Act got gutted under Obama, right? You voted Democrat and the Voting Rights Act got gutted anyway. The lesser of two evils. The lesser of two evils. Black people are in the most desperate, dire straits today that we've ever been in. This is the result of trusting the lesser of two evils. People, if this, tell me how it's supposed to be worse. Tell me. I'm going to open up the phone lines here in just a few moments, and I'm going to have you call in. And I want you to explain to me exactly what it is or how it is that things could be worse. Because that's what I want to know. I want to know exactly, okay, Voting for the lesser of two evils. I'm going to open up the phone lines and everybody who says that, Jason, I understand you don't like Biden. I understand Biden been bad. I understand, you know, you got reasons to be suspicious, but we got to vote. I only, only want to hear from the people who say, Jason, we've got to vote because otherwise you... Yeah, oh, uh, Biden is bad. Biden is white supremacist. Biden is terrible, but Trump... Well, there's, there's a difference between Biden and Trump. Not I feel now, not I think. I know there's a difference. And if you don't, if you vote for Biden, you're getting way better than Trump. We're actually getting some good things. I'm going to open up the phone lines here. I'm going to have you call in and explain to everyone why we should vote for the lesser of two evils. I only want to hear from the people who say, Jason, we need to vote Yes, we're choosing the lesser of two evils, but we don't have a choice. I want to hear from the people who are going to, who are saying that. In the meantime, we're going to take a very brief commercial, non-commercial break. When we come back, we're going to take your phone calls. This is the Black Channel. He is not some black leader. He isn't chasing fame. He doesn't crave white acceptance nor smile pleasantly for his enemies. Instead, he silently watches them. He is faceless. He is everywhere. He is black first. His name is Occam Jeffers, a ruthless counter-racist hitman. Occam Jeffers has been assigned a mission to eliminate murderous cops. Will he obtain justice for the subjugated black citizens of New Orleans? 
or will white violence once again reign supreme? Find out in the upcoming novel, War of the Heart, available everywhere books are sold on December 1st. Visit spiritof1811publishing.com. Our story, our family. This is the Black Channel. I am your host, your brother, your humble servant. And I'm opening up the telephone lines for people who want to call in and explain to us exactly why it is. Why it is that we need to support the lesser of two evils. That's what I want to know. I want to know why it is that you would endorse to us that we should support the lesser of two evils. What is it exactly that you are afraid of? What, if it, what is it exactly that you are protecting us from? That's what I want to know. I want to know exactly who is the lesser of two evils. I want to know exactly why we should support the lesser of two evils. I only want to hear from people who are saying that we should support Biden. I only want to hear from them. This is your opportunity here to tell us why we should do that. I want you to go ahead and check on that and then explain to us why we should do that. The telephone number is 646-787-1933. That's 646-787-1933, your personal access code to the Black Channel. Why should we support the lesser of two evils? If you are afraid that if your remedy, if your rationale for voting for Biden is to say we got to vote for Biden because Trump is way worse. I want you to give us a phone call and explain to us exactly what it is we should be concerned about. Explain to us exactly what the problem is. What are you afraid of? What are you protecting us from? What's going to happen? I want to know exactly what it is. I want to know exactly why it is that you are afraid. It's important to me to find that out. While I'm doing that here, what I'm going to do here is I want to read an article for you. I want to go over an article here that I was showing you uh, a little bit earlier. This is from CNN. Once again, they are very, very, very concerned about what's happening to everybody else. They're very concerned about the ramifications of everybody else not getting what they need. They're very worried about that. They're not really sure what to do. And as a result, we as black people are being told that the best we can get and the best we can do is what we currently have. That's what we're being told. That that's the best we can do is what we currently have. You just need to accept that. You just need to accept that. In an election year, they are letting you know exactly who they are backing and why. They're letting you know exactly who is on their team and why. They're letting you know who their interests are aligned with and why. This is the game that's being played on us as black people. We've been told the best that we can get and the best that we can hope for is 
hopefully not to be neglected and abused too badly. That's what we're being given. It's an article by Amara Walker. And in this article, hopefully our dream is not broken. Hopefully our dream is not broken, it says. Hopefully. Hopefully. Where black folk is concerned, by the way, it doesn't really turn out like that, but all right. But listen to what it is their dream is. When they talk about Asians or two Asians, take a look at what they talk to them about. Asian businesses. You know this, they're not talking about Asian interracial dating. Did you notice that? I want you to understand this. When they talk to Asians, do they discuss Asian interracial dating as a issue? Do they discuss Asian interracial marriage? Do they discuss Asians uh, gender warring? Do they discuss any of that? No. When they talk to them, they talk about business. They talk about business when they talk to them. That's how they speak to them. They speak to them about business. But they do not speak to us the same way. They don't speak to us about what we need. Matter of fact, we're told, you know, you ought to be just glad that anybody's allowing you here at all. Understand something. These are the discussions that they have with everybody else. With everybody else, it's a discussion about what you're going to get. With everybody else, it's a discussion about what you're going to have. With everybody else, they talk to them about what it is they can expect to receive. But they don't say it to us that way. They don't say it to us that way. Just understand, these are totally different conversations. You see, when when they come to black folk and we start talking about economics, they tell us, me no speak, you no English. Do you understand that? 